Hi everybody, this is Wade from Wade's Orchids. Uh, hope you can hear me over the exhaust fan. But it's uh, pretty warm in here, things are going. I was going to repot this. This is a Lelia Bridgeri. And uh, it's what's called a Rupicolius Lelia, uh, which means it grows on rocks, okay? And there's quite a group of, of this type. Also, your, uh, a lot of your encyclias and your dendrobiums, a, a lot of those uh, <clears throat> take the same type of a potting mix. So I was going to repot this and I thought, well, it might be good if I show you guys uh, the considerations that I use in, in potting something like this up. Uh, now, first thing is to unpot this and uh, I need to move over here to have this go over into the trash. Okay, there we go. Nice healthy root system there as you can see. Um, and it, it has bloomed for me once already this year. It's going to bloom again. Uh, right here is a, a sheath with a bloom spike in it. And uh, I've got total of four grows going now. This one here has a very small sheath in it and it might bloom or it might not. I, I'm not really sure. But uh, this one here that did bloom is, is already, if you can see here, it's already putting out another new growth. So waiting until this thing is, is not getting ready to bloom is, is not a possibility because it, it looks like it's uh, and until it's ready for rest, which is not the time to repot things, uh, it's it's going to be pushing and shoving the whole way. So uh, we're going to repot it here now. I was going to, as I said, we're we're going to look at the considerations in the repotting. Uh, first of all, for the most part, as especially as these mature. They, they really need a, a very fast draining type of, of situation and mix. Uh, this, is, this is my regular Catlia potting mix, which is uh, medium kiwi bark and perlite and charcoal. Okay, now what I'm going to do first is we have to pick out a pot. Now, we're going to go with a clay pot here because, as I said, I want something that drains fast. Here's, here's a couple of types of clay pots. Uh, you might be able to find some like this that has the, the slats in it uh, or the regular ones. These are both 4-inch. Uh, if you really want to have some holes for, for extra aeration and that on the side of the pot, what you can do is you can find a masonry bit, okay? And it's called masonry bit, and I would say between one fourth and three eighth inch. That will allow you to drill holes in through this, okay? And uh, it, it's a useful thing. So all you do is you put in your drill bit. Don't press real hard when you're going through because you'll end up breaking this because as you know, uh, terracotta is pretty soft as far as this type of thing goes, okay? But what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to pot it right in this, okay? And I'm going to start out with, oh, there's one other thing. Something like this, you might think it looks pretty, but it is absolutely diddly squat use for orchids. It's, it defeats the whole purpose of, of a clay pot, it, which means it, it seals it off and doesn't let it aerate. Okay, so don't do something like this if you're growing orchids in it. Put, put a flower of some other kind or something in it. Keep it for, for those things, okay? So, we're going to start out here. And what I have, I, I gave this a, a quick rinse. This is charcoal, okay? I love using charcoal for drainage material in this type of situation. And I don't need a whole lot. This is about a half inch of charcoal in there. Charcoal for years and years will continue to absorb impurities 
and it will never break down, which means it will always get the excellent, excellent drainage that you want, okay? So we're going to pick this up and just place it in the pot here. I always plant a little bit deeper because it's very easy to lift it up afterwards, okay? And we're going to just fill in around it here. Okay, tap it, shake it down a bit. Okay, work it a little bit more. I'm pretty certain that you guys pretty much all, all potted orchids before, but the, the main thing here is, is to show you how things that, that need extra drainage should be treated, okay? So we're, we're eventually working this down. And you notice that as, as it's gone down, the, the plant itself has been going up, okay? This happens almost every time when you're potting things. Now, one really good thing with this kiwi bark is this plant is going to be coming out of here a long time before the kiwi bark breaks down. This kiwi bark lasts a good three years uh, in plastic pots. It would probably last five years in, in clay. I, I have never gotten to the point where I've taken something out of a clay pot yet and, and had the kiwi bark broken down. Um, so we have this firmed up in here a little bit. And that's about all there is to it. make sure that our new growth that, that I showed you is, is in good shape and it is. You gotta really be careful with something with, with a new growth like that because it just, oh my gosh, you, you just rub it and, and it snaps off. So you always be aware of where it is and, and treat it as a very gentle thing, which it is, okay? So we're all potted up here, and I'm going to take the label and get out my trusty marker. And it's July, no, it's June of 2015, so I write 615. Okay, some people like to write when, when it blooms, also on the back of the label. I, I don't do that. I do keep, try to write down when I repot because it's, I mean, if you forget when it's bloomed last, that, that's not that big of a deal. If you're growing things properly, it will bloom when it's supposed to. But as far as repotting, if you have a few hundred orchids or, or even 50 orchids, you are going to forget when you repot things, okay? And this will let you know, okay? As I said, this type of method works very well for dendrobiums and encyclias that need the, the incredible fast drainage uh, for good root systems like this does, okay? I hope this helped you out with your collection and you have a nice day and happy growing. Bye-bye.